With this video, I want to quickly show you a cool new feature when it comes to deploying Spring Boot applications as Docker containers, which was added recently with Spring Boot 2.3. To provide you a quick demo, I've already prepared a sample application. So we are using the latest Spring Boot version here. Also, I'm using the currently supported Java version 14. So with Spring Boot 2.3, we now get support for Java 8, Java 11, and Java 14. The actual application itself doesn't matter that much for this tutorial, but let's have a quick look at it. So I'm basically including the Spring Boot Starter web to get the embedded Tomcat and expose some uh, API to the outside world to fetch some data and also here the user's endpoint, for example, already makes use of the Java 14 record feature. So if we have a look at the traditional way how we build uh, Docker images for our Spring Boot application, we basically start from a general base image. Here I picked the OpenJDK 14 base image. Then we usually export our application port. Then we add our fat jar. And in the end, we just specify that inside the Docker image, we just want to run our application with java-jar. And as I'm using some OpenJDK 14 preview features, I have to pass this flag here, but that's basically it. So while this traditional way of building Docker images uh, works great, there's one big downside of it, which I want to quickly demonstrate. So let's switch to the terminal and build the application. Uh, to make it faster, let's skip the tests for now. So if we build the application and now say docker build hyphen t, enter the name of our application and then build it, you will see it successfully built our docker image. And if we take a look at the layers, so can think of a Docker image like an onion. So it consists of several layers where the, the base layer is uh, usually uh, some, some Linux distribution in this case. Then the JDK was added. And on top of this, we see here, these are our commands inside our Docker file. We expose the port. This is always with the hash and a timestamp when, when this was added. And here you see the second uh, top layer is our jar file, which is about 18 megabytes. So while copying our application to our Docker uh, to our Docker image, we have to copy the whole fat jar, which in our case contains um, 18 megabytes. And this will add a layer of 18 megabytes. And if we now do a small change to our application, Let's say we add some implementation detail. Let's say here Duke Duke. And if we now rebuild the application, and again say I want to create a new Docker image, that was fast. And now take a look at the history again. So we will see here. You, this layer somehow changed. So you see here the the hash IDs are, are different. And that's the case because um, the uh, fat jar file changed and there is no smart mechanism to detect uh, that just the small implementation detail changed. So we have to copy the whole fat jar on each Docker image build over and over again on top of our base image. So while this is fine for our, our local development with 18 megabytes, consider working with a bigger Spring Boot application, which might uh, have more dependencies and uh, a total jar size of, let's say, 100 megabytes. And you push to your branch uh, on a daily basis, multiple times a day. And on each uh, build, your CI server will build your application, create a new Docker image, and then has to push the new Docker image to your container registry. So Docker will only push the layers which changed. So in our case, it will re-push the 18 megabytes uh, of this layer over and over again. And in, our, uh, in, the, in the example of the 100 megabytes application, 
this may take some seconds as you might upload this uh, to a remote container registry running, for example, at AWS. And besides additional time, this also is additional costs as this network traffic um, is there on each build time. So why this is a little bit suboptimal, with Spring Boot 2.3, we can now get a new way of creating our jar files. So what we now have, we can instruct our Spring Boot Maven plugin to say we want layer jar files. Let's do this for now and rebuild the application. What this will now do, so if you have a look at our target folder, so you still see your 18 or 70 megabytes here now uh, jar file. So here nothing changed, but if we have a look inside the jar file with jar tf, and then specify the path to our jar file, we will now see, first of all, there is now a boot inf layers.idx file and the Spring Boot Maven plugin now put our application in several layers. To have a look what these layers are, we can take a look at this file. Um, to get this file out of the jar, just execute this command here, jar xf, then the path to the jar file, and then the file you want to extract out of the jar file. Let's get this. And this is now in the folder, so let's take a look into it. This is now displaying the layers the Spring Boot Maven plugin created for us. So it uh, now groups all the external dependencies, so like the Spring Boot Starter Web, which includes Tomcat, for example, or the Spring Core framework. All of this is now um, inside the folder boot and lib. Then there is a layer called Spring Boot Loader. So on top you see here some classes of, of Spring framework uh, which are required to uh, launch a jar file. This is a layer, then there is a snapshot dependencies layer. For this example, I didn't include any snapshot libraries, but if we have a snapshot dependency here, we would see them here. And the last layer is basically our application. So here is now everything which uh, usually changes on a daily basis. Our classes and all our resources now reside in this layer. We can now use these layers to um, write more efficient um, Docker files. And to quickly demonstrate this, uh, I will show you this by demonstrating another new feature of Spring Boot 2.3. So with Spring Boot 2.3, we are now able to create um, Docker images out of the box without specifying our own Docker file. And what this will use in the background is our so-called build packs. So this is a cloud native initiative. You can read about it on this site. And what it basically does, it makes um, packaging your application um, really simple. You almost have to provide nothing. If you have worked in the past with, for example, the Pivotal Cloud Foundry or Heroku, you might already uh, know build packs. And the default build pack we currently get is the build pack from Paketo. So they have build packs for several languages, but Spring Boot uh, uses the Java build pack out of the box. You can also specify your own build pack. If you have a company specific one, this can be configured here, but let's use the standard one for now. What we can do in addition, um, if you want to modify the name of the image which will be created, we can specify the name here. And also as I'm using Java 14, I'm specifying here that the build pack um, should use Java version of 14. So we can then later on use this image to start our application. So if we add this execution to our Spring Boot Maven plugin and now say Maven clean package, you will see after bundling the jar file, it will execute some new goals here. So the, the build image, this outputs a lot. If you execute this for the first time, it will download basically two Docker images from Paketo, 
One is the uh, builder image and the other one is the run image. And this is this will internally um, build the Docker image uh, in a, a layered way. So in the end, we can see here it, um, it added two of five application layers. So somehow internally it now recognizes due to this layers.idx file that our jar file is uh, layered. And if we now, oh, let's for now build this again. So when nothing changed, we shouldn't see any new image or new new layer being added. So we could see it could reuse 505 image. And let's now take a first look at the Docker history. So let's take a look at the layers of this image we get by this build pack. This one's wrong. This way. So we can see here there are some layouts. Basically here down below you see these 80 megabytes. This will most probably be the um, libraries. And on top of this, you see a really small layer, which just contains 12 kilobytes. This is basically uh, our application, as we just have three glass files. This is really small. And the nice thing about this is let's, if we now change some small application detail. So let's change this here to Jude build pack, save, and rebuild our whole project. We should now see that um, the build pack uh, could detect that the basic application layers, which are the ones from Spring Boot and from our libraries, didn't change. And just our application logic, so our business logic we write, changed. And it will just add this new layer on top of what it already had. So here we see in the output now, it could reuse four or five application layers and just added one. So this is quite nice. And if we now take a look at the history of this image here, we will now see here a different hash. So this, this outermost layer just changed on top of this, which is really small. So this will now make our subsequent builds really fast. So usually you don't change your application dependencies not that often and basically just um, adjust your application logic and with this layer jar and the build pack in the background you will just push these 11 kilobytes um, to your docker registry on each build so this will be really fast and you will save a lot of network traffic let's see what happens if we add a new dependency so let's say we want to use also webflux now let's add webflux to the project this should make the jar a little bit bigger and if we now say build the application we will see it it could reuse three or five layers and had to add two so it basically um, can't just simply override internal layers. It's had to add the uh, library layer and our application layer again, but that's fine as um, changing or updating your dependencies doesn't happen that often. If we now take a look at the layers again, so we will now see here on top our application. And here this 24 megabytes is basically uh, all our libraries which uh, increased slightly due to adding the Spring Boot starter web flux. So to also prove that this created image uh, is able to be executed and we can use it, we can now say docker run minus p to specify the port minus e. We have to add an additional environment variable to the docker container as I'm using the preview features for Java 14 records. We have to add this flag to our um, JVM. And if I hit now enter, we'll now see our Spring Boot application starts and everything is up and running. If I now try to access 
for example, the user's endpoint, we should see we get an array of two JSONs and can return these Java 14 records as part of our um, internal API here. You're not limited to, to only use these build packs to make use of the layer. So if you provide your own Docker file, you have to rewrite it so that it can detect your, your layers and efficiently cache the layers, which didn't change. But with this um, cloud native build packs, it uh, gets really simple to just create a really efficient uh, Docker image um, out of the box while building your application with Maven Clean Package. Thank you.